All right, we back, y'all. We back. I'm going to sit here and shell some peas. We back, y'all. Damn, I thought I brought that outside. I didn't bring that out. Child, I be doing too much too fast. Moving too fast. I be doing too much too fast. Ooh, let me not set that down too hard. Put around and break that. That's all I need. Y'all. And that, I'm going to collect some seeds. I'm going to shell some peas while I continue to talk to y'all. Somebody asked me to talk about, and see, I can't, I, I don't have the time to stand up here and just talk without doing something I have to be able, I have to do. Because the chores are never ending on the homestead. Uh, y'all, Somebody asked me to talk about after college, working until I got a job or something like that. And so, yeah, I'll touch on that. Okay, so growing up, my mother was the hardest worker. Her and my granny probably. Actually, my great-grandmother too. Why am I not naming any men? Probably because I didn't really know my grandparents. I'm not saying my daddy didn't work. He did. He worked until he retired. Uh, so my father did work. Uh, and he was a good worker, you know. That's, that's probably what he was, really the main thing he was good at was making money. Uh, all the rest of the stuff. Child, he left a lot to be desired. But anyway, my mother always instilled in me, you have to make your own way. And to never, let me, let me say this. My mother was an accountant. Um, my mother went to a business magnet high school. She was salutatory and for those that don't know what that is that's number two in her high school class and let me say this a lot of people say oh it's just number two in your high school class and now she went to dallas magnet schools at a time when dallas magnet schools were very competitive i'm not saying they're not competitive now i do not feel they are as competitive um you still have to apply to get into the magnet schools in dallas but I still don't think they were as competitive as they were in the 70s. Um, so not only did you have to apply to get into this school, um, you had to keep a certain GPA. Like, you know, just there were a lot of different things that had to go on. But either way it went, she went to the business magnet because that's what she was interested in. My aunt, her sister, went to the health magnet. Uh, my aunt... It's not as smart as my mother, to be frank. Um, but that's neither here nor there. So I'm saying I'll let to say, this is why my mother always instilled in me. Get your lesson. You have to get your lesson. Uh, when you go to school, you know, you, it is what it is about whatever they teach you, but you need to know how to conduct yourself out in the world because it doesn't matter if you're working for somebody else or you got your own thing. If you don't know how to conduct yourself, Ain't nothing really gonna come to you because people gonna figure out real quick. Oh, she unprofessional, or you know, just these different things. And do you have people out here operating unprofessionally? Yeah, but they don't get half as much as what they should get by doing it. So, you know, it is what it is. So, I knew, you know, early on, I said, okay, my mother did get an associate's degree, she wanted to get. A undergraduate degree and I think my mom probably would have went even further but she got married and you know my pops wanted kids and when I look back on that my pops only really wanted kids because his brother had had kids before him so everything in my father's household see they they kind of lived in a dog eat dog world too it was always competitive you know what I'm saying Oh, my brother didn't have kids. I need to hurry up and have kids. That's the craziest reason in the world to have children. You know what I'm saying? It's not the Kentucky dirt. But anyway, that is what it is. So, my mother kind of forego forewent, you know, some of the things that she wanted to forego, you know, to please him or whatever. Because mama didn't even want kids at that point in time. She didn't want kids, you know, just right, right then. 
she was like, I could have waited a little longer. But, you know, things happened and she never regretted me or nothing. But, you know, I often wonder though how far she had went in her schooling. Probably much further. But anyway, that being said, I said, okay, well, mama didn't get to do it. I'm going to pick up the torch and go. But in the meantime, in between time, as a single mother, because after a while my parents got divorced, as a single mother, my mother let it be known. Hey, your feet get big, your clothes cost a lot of money, like you, 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 you got to get you a hustle. You you gonna have to some of your little stuff if you want all this little stuff that you want, you you gonna have to get you a hustle and you gonna have to bounce it. So you need to teach yourself how to do something. Now when I was younger, my mama kept me in a lot of different things, hobbies and karate and ceramics and just all kind of different stuff. Um, so it was no shortage of you know basically she was giving me the skills then. She was saying, look, these are all the things you can do. You did karate, you was good at it. You might have to stick with it, but you was good at it. But you see. These are the, you know, it's nothing I had. There's nothing that you haven't been able to do. So you'll save me your seeds. Y'all see? All those seeds. All those seeds. So those are Creole sellers. But anyway, so my mother was letting me know then. See, it ain't nothing that you can't do if you put your mind to it. So as you gain these skills, these are skills that maybe you can use later on, you know? So, like I said, expose your kids. I think I said this in the last, you know, one of the other videos in this series. Expose your kids and yourself for that matter. If, if it's things that you've never done, go do them. You get what I'm saying? Go do them. What are you waiting on? Because it might be something, and don't just automatically be like, oh, I ain't going to like this, or I ain't going to go do it. Take your kids to go do it. Oh, they ain't going to be it. Because I've heard parents say that so much, and I have to check these parents, and they probably get mad at me. Because once again, you know, they first battle cry, but you ain't got no children. Yeah, but if I did, I wouldn't be telling them what they couldn't do, because that's the only thing they're going to focus on. Kids will focus on what they hear. You constantly speaking negative, they're going to constantly think negative. Because I'm telling you, I have dealt with adults that I can just tell. I, and they, it'd be so funny. I was like, your mama was super negative, wasn't she? She always telling you what what not to do instead of telling you how to do. You see what I'm saying? There's a way to do things. There's a way to say, okay, well, this is how you do it versus this way. See, it's a positive way to deliver something and a negative way to deliver something. You constantly tell these kids, don't do that. Don't do. No. Tell them, Okay. You trying to do this? Let me show you a little bit better way to do that. Or let me give you an alternative because the way you're going about it, it may cause these adverse, you know, effects. Teach them. That's what teaching is. Don't just, and then that's another thing. Don't just tell them, don't do this. And then you don't tell them why. To be fair, if you're telling somebody to not do something and you don't know why they shouldn't do it, you might need to be quiet because that means you ain't thought that through all the way. You need to be able to verb, verbalize and say, the reason why you shouldn't do this is X, Y, Z. If you have no valid reason, be quiet. Now, that being said, my mom was forever ex exposing me to different things, uh, different hobbies, different people, different scenarios. Because her thing was, I don't know what you're going to like out of none of this stuff. You may not like none of it. And the, the point is not for you to fall in love with everything I'm exposing you to. The point is for you to find skills and things that maybe may become lucrative for you over time. Meaning, it might be a time where you might need a little extra money and your job don't provide it. So you may need to do a little something on the side. But I don't want you out here doing illegal things. So you need to do something on the side that's legal. You get what I'm saying? So those are the things that she was constantly exposing me to. So if people wonder why I know how to do so much stuff, because my mother was forever saying, well, try it. You know? And I would say, what you think about this, this, that, or the field? Well, try it. I don't know. You may like it. And if you don't like it, just don't do it tomorrow. You know? 
that's why I know how to work on code. That's why I know how to fix stuff around and build stuff around this house. That's why I know how to garden. That's why, because I didn't like gardening at first, but then, you know, I love it now. Absolutely love it. So, those are the things you have to arm your children with. So, by the time I got to college, I already had a few skills that I knew how to do already. I already knew how to work on cars. I already So in college, I did work study to earn money. And then, of course, work study is only when you're in school. So summertime and any breaks or anything, and work study, you don't get paid so much anyway. You don't get paid that much. Um. So the rest of the time, I was working on cars. Look, I'm going to be real with y'all. And I'm not saying this is right, and I'm not telling you to tell your kids to do this. It's people in college, they got more money than they got brains, and, and that should be obvious. Look at the people leading this nation. A lot of them got more money than they got brains. And um, they don't want to write their papers. They don't want to take notes in class. They don't want to do nothing that it requires for them to get that degree because of nepotism, because of privilege, because of whatever. Baby, I was writing papers. When I would get to the end of a class, if I took a class that people, like I would hear the students talk about, oh, that class is difficult, it's hard, you can't hardly pass it, all this kind of stuff. Let me tell you how I took the notes, because I took really good notes. So when it comes to scholastically, Teach your children how to take good notes, how to read well, how to write well. You know what I'm saying? I hate to say it, these people got more money than sense. I don't want to write this essay. Write it for me, which in today's day, they got AI, so people might be using AI for that. But I was writing papers, getting paid. I was, I was selling my notes. After I get through with the course, I let it be known, hey, I got the notes. One person got my notes and was like, yeah, with her notes, I was able to get a B in this class. And they didn't really study nothing. So when that word got out that my notes was, what did it do? I was selling notes to people. Um, I would make copies. I would keep the original and make copies. Because these people, they don't want to go to class. They don't want to. It's, it's so much stuff that they don't want to do. You know what I'm saying? Just simple stuff like that. But like I said, I was working on calls. I was, uh, what else was I doing? I mean, y'all probably seen people like me. The, the girls that braid hair in college. The girls that braid hair do hair. They was, they was making a grip in college. You know what I'm saying? Like, wait a minute now. I don't even know what that was. But all of this different little stuff is skills and things that your kids can use as a side hustle to where if they need to get some laundry detergent, they can get laundry detergent. If they need to get, you know, it could be anything, y'all. It could be any little thing. And also what it does is it helps them be independent so they ain't out here pulling out all their hair because they don't know what to do. At any given time, I was like, shoot, I know what to do. I can, I can, I can, uh, I can hustle up on me some money right quick. I'm like that now. I can hustle up on me some money. As soon as I started gardening, people buying seeds, ain't they? For the life of me, I can't understand how it's gardeners out here ain't saving seeds, ain't selling seeds. Easy as it is. It's free to open up an account on eBay. It's free to open up an account on Etsy. It's free to do these things. It's free. People make content, content creator come out. They don't know how to get their seeds to nobody. No, you're not trying to know. You're not trying to know. It's easy to get seeds to people. Put a video up that say, hey, want these seeds? I have them. Purchase them. It ain't even that hard. People will email you. Nowadays, you can send money so easy, so fast, all this cash up and stuff. And people talking about they don't know how to do. That's because you don't want to know how to do you get what I'm saying? And I'm not saying everybody should be doing that. I'm just saying. If something happened, 
think about how more comfortable and confident you are when you say, well, shoot, I know I can hustle up on me a little money. I'll be all right. Why you think when COVID hit, these people started losing their mind? They don't know how to do nothing. They ain't got nothing. They just standing around. You know what I'm saying? It didn't fade me to step in the house. I want to step in the house anyway, because these people out in the streets is foolish. Like I want to stand out here with these nut bags. I'm, I'm good. So it's like, you know. So that being said, all through college, I was hustling. I was I was working on cars. I was uh, selling notes. I was writing papers. I was, uh, I mean, that was, that was the gist of the main stuff I was doing. I was doing my work study. I was getting that little check to you know what I'm saying? Uh, then once I graduated, I didn't start, to be honest, y'all, I don't use my degree. I know, like, well, I don't use it in a professional sense, at least not yet. Um, there was a point when I thought I would never use my degree professionally, but the more I get into this gardening and urban farming, the more I see what well, now nah, I probably am going to end up using this degree because I, you know, I think I had mentioned a little bit to, to let y'all know my degree is in um, biology, but it's a concentration in wildlife biology. And for those that don't know what wildlife biology is, you can think of it as similar to environmental biology, um, but we study a little bit more things than environmental biologists. Sometimes it depends on the program. Like for instance, we study uh, uh, ecologies, meaning like, so that degree is designed for you to go into a lot of different fields. You can go be a veterinarian, you can go into um, the Parks and Wildlife Service, and um, but a lot of people don't even understand what Parks and Wildlife do. It's a lot of different stuff that they do, but one of the things that they do is like when you see the, the wildlife agents, they got a TV show of them people doing that now. The police officers that if you don't have a fishing license, if you caught too many fish, hunt too many deer, if you hunt out of season, if you don't have the right tags, all of that stuff. Um, all of that stuff falls under that because, for instance, take the deer population and use something simple. Everybody know that deer eat up everything. If you have too many deer, the deer actually, the population can get so big that the deer actually can have adverse effects on the on the on the forest. They eat too much vet like you have too many deer, they eat too much vegetation, they actually can eat the forest down. Like to I mean the way they come in people's gardens and eat. You know what I'm saying? So imagine if you have a deer population that's out of control. It can actually eat the eat eco ecosystems just down to just stems, nothing. Because they're hungry. They're going to eat. They're not gonna say, oh there's less leaves. No, they're going to eat. So um, that's why hunting is good to a point, but you don't want to hunt too much. This is why there are stipulations on how many does you can get, how many bucks you can get, things of this nature. Why you have to kill deer over a certain size, because if they're over a certain size, they're a certain age. That's what wildlife biologists do. That's one of the things they do. Um, you also have wildlife biologists that look at um, other things. Um, so you have wildlife biologists that look at all different animal species, their populations, diseases, things like that. How it affects uh, humans, uh, how it affects the um, environment, things of that nature. So, like I said, the more the more I get into this, the more I feel like I probably am going to use this degree because... Um, Urban farming and getting rid of food deserts and things of that nature is also something that wildlife biologists uh, kind of do as well. Um, because wildlife biologists want the, the betterment of, you know, humankind and we want it to be harmonious. That's, that's what you try to work for. You try to work for harmonious. So you want people to be able to hunt and eat their venison, but then you also want the deer population to be um, what it's supposed to be. And you don't want either one of them to get out of whack. You don't want the hunters to get overzealous, and you don't want the deer to overrun everything. And that's just one, like, it's the same thing with catfish. It's the same thing with trout. It's the same. That's why when they put a limit on what you can fish and all this kind of stuff, that's why it's there. Um, because without these fish, the things they eat get out of whack, 
but if you have too many fish they destroy um, the ecosystem so you want a balance and humans act in that balance by fishing and hunting so that being said getting into this these these food forests and um, things of this nature I probably am going to end up kind of professionally using this degree because like I told y'all with that land over there I have every intention of teaching courses uh, well I don't think I mentioned it I have every intention of teaching courses to people to teach them how to grow their own foods if you're in a food desert a lot of times you have people who um, financially sometimes can't afford the freshest foods I have every inten intention to sell surplus at a reasonable cost, I have no intention of busting people over the head. It's not, this is not a, a thing for me to get rich. I don't have any desire. I don't get me wrong. I would like to be rich. It's a lot of stuff I want. I wouldn't mind a jet. I wouldn't mind one. I can't even lie to you. I wouldn't mind one. Because sometimes I just want to fly places. And I don't want to wait. I want to do like how I see them them, them, them them politicians do. They walk out on the tarmac and the door open. You know what I'm saying? The door to the plane open. I, I kind of like that. But I'm not crazy. I would use that for good and not just for flossing. But um but yeah, so it just becomes this thing where Lord have mercy. Like I said, right after college I didn't think I was gonna use that degree. Um I got presented with an offer to become a financial advisor. Um and that's what I did. So that's what I do currently. I'm a financial advisor. Um so I tell people how to how to not spend their money, <laughs> how to hoard money. That's what I teach people how to do. Is how to hoard money, um, and that also worked out as well because I don't know how many of y'all read the comments, but I said myself. A lot of people in the comments said the the thing they wish they had been taught by their parents. A couple of two three people said this was financial uh, financial wisdom. It's what they wish they had been taught. And I feel the same way. My mother was very bad with money. Um, money burned a hole in her pocket. Uh, you know, everybody's not perfect. So I understood that. But as I got older, I wanted more. Because there were instances where if mama just would have had a little discipline. And like I said, it goes back to when I was saying those stressors. Um, my mother was raised by a single mother as well. And um, they were not rich by any means. A single mother with three children uh, in the 60s. So I, I know where a lot of that comes from. A lot of these desires and things that you have come from that little kid in you. My mama wanted all these different little things growing up that my grandmother either wouldn't give to her or couldn't give to her because of the financial situation and financial strain. So when my mother got older, even though she wasn't rich, little money she would just give and give and give and give and give and pay. And, and I think, honestly, detrimentally, that's one of the most detrimental things too that you can do to your child. Because she used to buy me a lot of stuff. Don't get me wrong. Now, I didn't get nothing if my grades wasn't right. If I didn't have all A's, I didn't get anything. And I mean that, all A's, because she knew what I was capable of. She'll tell me in a minute, girl, please, I don't want to hear it. You can get all A's in that classroom, because that little mess they're teaching y'all, they ain't even teaching y'all nothing. You get A's in that, and you get what you want. If you bring home anything other than an A, you get your ass with. And that's what it was. I got A's all the way through school, all the way. The only time I didn't get A's was my freshman year in college, and that's because I was first time by myself. I was, I was effing off, just being frank. I was playing games the first two semesters. I was playing games. Then after that, when I seen my grades, I was like, you know damn well, you better than this. And one of the professors straight up told me that. One of the professors say, I want to see you in my office. She said, I don't know what you're doing. She said, but you're, you're better than this. She said, you sat back there and you, you barely came to class. I gave a test. And you got an A on the test. She said, but your attendance. Your attendance is trash, so you're not really turning in none of your assignments because you're not here to get the assignment. She said, I don't know what you got going on, but no, this this ain't what it do. So when that teacher told me that and then I seen my grades, uh-uh, nope. After that, I went playing. I was on the president's list every single semester. I didn't play them games. See, we have honors, honors awards. I mean, honors convocation, which is a little ceremony 
where if you're on a president's list, the dean's list, the honor roll, any of that stuff, they call your name, you get little medals and stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it don't really mean a whole lot now because when you graduate, you graduate. Nobody ever really looks at your grades past that. But when I was going through school, that's what I looked forward to. Like, nah, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get all A's in these classes. Um, I changed my major when I was. I changed my major at the end of my sophomore year. So if I had stayed in that major, I would have been a junior in that major. I changed my major then. I finished my biology degree in three years. Um, so I was in school a total of five years. Two years as a music major. And that major, I, I wish I could have stayed a music major, but the person that was running the program, no. <laughs> no, they were just, they were a misogynist and just... No, I was not. I was not staying in that program. It just. It was not. No, and a lot of the women who who did didn't change and went to. They are in that field. They're in the music field, but they're miserable because of a lot of the different stuff. Once again, stress. Some of this stuff ain't worth you showing in your life over. You get what I'm saying? Some of this stuff is not worth you shortening your life over. And people don't understand that. They just be dealing with it. Oh, you know, oh, oh, what don't kill me, make me stronger. Yeah, to a point. Because it is killing you slowly. It's just like on Lean On Me when uh, when they was at the top of the building. And, and uh, Joe Clark, Morgan Freeman, was like, You smoke crack, don't you? You smoke crack. You're just killing yourself slowly. Why don't you just jump off? And it was basically telling him, What you killing yourself slow for? Just jump off the building. Ain't no need of you smoking this crack, killing yourself slow. Just jump off the building. That's what I'm saying. Stress is like crack. It kills you slowly. If, if, if nobody ever equated it to you like that, you better think about it. So, that being said, that's, uh, you know, when an opportunity presented itself to your financial advisor, and I knew my mother struggled with her finances, and I knew I wasn't very, I was a little financially illiterate, but I wasn't very financially illiterate. Um, my granny was actually really good with her money. She was born in a depression. And my granny and grandfather both were born in de depression. And I don't know at what point in their life, because unfortunately, I, I should have asked my granny and stuff, but I, I never asked her. Like, when did she start? I know some people were helping them and telling them, like, along the way. Because I remember her saying, and maybe I should tell that story. Ugh, but that's, that's, that's going to be a whole other video. Um... But I remember her telling me that people along the way were kind of guiding her and telling her what to do. And these were these were white people. My granny was a domestic, which we don't know what that means, maybe. Um, and maybe I'll tell a little bit about her life at some point. Because she was very pivotal in my life as well. Um, a lot of the lessons I either learned from her, my mom. Because um, I spent a lot of time with my granny. A lot. I was at her house all the time. But, um... But yeah, so there were people helping her and telling her what to do. And she said it. She said, yeah, they knew. They knew that, you know, they're not telling the black people this, this, that, and the other. You know, some it was some good white people, as I like to call them. You know, allies. People who just want everybody to come up. Not these people that, you know, they say one thing in public, but real talk under their breath, they on some other stuff and then want to tell you that they're not racist. No, yes, you are. You are racist. Your racist as the day is long, and you just don't want to admit it because admitting that you were racist hurts your feelings. Well, what you think it's doing to the other people who you being racist towards? But we're not gonna get on it. Um. So, so yeah, y'all. Um. I learned a little bit from my granny, but like I said, the opportunity presented itself to be a financial advisor. Um. I learned a ton of financial uh, knowledge then, and I applied what I learned to myself. So I said to myself, even if I don't like being a financial advisor, which is all right, it's straight. It's, I'm not I'm not passionate about it. Um, I was at one point in time, but unfortunately, and let me say this for y'all that's out here listening. Unfortunately, a lot of my clients are white. Why y'all think that is? Y'all answer. Because white people are conditioned and taught to keep their money. And they talk that, it, like, even if they don't know nothing about money, if somebody come to you and try to teach you how to keep your money, keep it. 
Now, it's harder. No, I'll take that back. That's a lot. It's harder to win over black people. Black people have this anxiety about money and this, you know, just whatever it is. <laughs> they don't, they don't want, and, and please y'all, don't try to uh, ask me to be y'all financial advisor. <laughs> I'm getting ready to get out of that field. Um, I'm getting out of it because number one, I don't like it that most of my clients is white. It just, it's a reminder that every day, so many of our people are falling further and further backwards just from stubbornness. And just from backbiting. You know what I'm saying? When I come into a situation and I'm willing to show you how to invest, show you how to get all your stuff together, show you how your kids can be protected in case something happened to you, all these different things, and the first thing out of your mouth is, well, how much money do you get? So you want me to work for free? You want me to save you financially, but you want me to work for free. See, white people never ask these questions. The white people ask, where do I sign? Now, the only thing with white people sometimes is, I have to build a rapport. And when you're in financial advising, when it comes to money, you have to build a rapport really quick. So some of them, some of them are not racist. You know, you don't know that until you meet them. You know, um, they don't know you black off top, and then you know you meet them or whatever, and then you know you find out. Them you'll never win over. Ain't no nigga gonna show. But then some of them is racist and will fool with you because they want that money. That's just to them green, 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 green is the color that matter. Yeah, she might be black or whatever, or these men that have these patriarchal problem. Oh, she a woman. She don't know. You know what I'm saying? I run into all types, y'all. All types. But overwhelmingly, these white people want to get to that paper. And if they friend told them, well, nah, she helped me do this, this, that, and the other. And they showing them their investment accounts. And they're like, oh, this is what it look like. They're going to be like, where do I sign up at? They don't ask me how much I make. They don't ask me none of that. Matter of fact, they say, uh, you, you need some more clients? Because I got... What I'm saying is, I don't mind helping people, but it gets to a point where I'm making them so rich and my people is steadily clamoring, fouling back for they, some of them for their own foolishness, some of them, you know, but then you got some of them, they want to get to the paper, you know, you got some of them, they like shit, I don't care what you make, I matter of fact, I'm going to send you some more people up here so you can make some more money, you see what I'm saying? It take all kinds, but unfortunately, we've been so conditioned to be worried, be counting somebody else's money. You ain't even got no money to count, but you're trying to count mine. What sense do that make? Tell me what sense that make. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't care less how much money these people have in their bank account. Couldn't care less. I'm trying to help make it to where the next generations don't suffer, and you on some how much am I making? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, no. Nah. So... That's what I do currently, but understand this, when it comes to that, I work for myself. I have times when financial advisors and people is thinking about their money, like it's times of the year when I'm super busy, and there's other times of the year when it comes to financial advisors and I'm not that busy. I work all year round, but think about it, around Christmas, nobody's think, nobody's trying to get their money together, they're trying to blow money. Um, when it's, when it's, when it's summertime, getting ready to go back to school nobody's trying to get their money together they trying to spend money on these kids and or, or summertime they trying to take vacations all this stuff this is what they doing so those are my downtime times when people think about money the beginning of the year when y'all setting these new year's resolutions and these goals and all this stuff y'all setting at tax time when people really thinking about their money you know what i'm saying that's the time when people is really trying to get out here and get out other than that these people they ain't thinking about that so i'm saying i'll let to say that's why I still hustle, because guess what? Don't get me wrong, I don't spend all my money in one place or at one time. But when, uh -oh. when uh, I have my busy times, when it's, when it's down times, I can do other little stuff that I like to do and hustle and make money. You know what I'm saying? I can work on my own stuff, I can fix on my own house, which that saves me money. It don't make me money, but it saves me money. Or I can um, do little things here and there. I can sell seeds. I can, you know, things of this nature. Just different little things that I can get into and make money. Um, it was. It's never really been hard for me to make money. So, you know, like the person that asked the question of talking about the in-between time graduating college to getting a job. I actually got 
started being a financial advisor pretty quick after um, after I graduated. Um, Cause I was trying to get to the get to the paper, like you know what I'm saying. I had goals and things that I wanted to do. Um, I never really stopped hustling. Ever. I don't think I ever will, as long as I can move around and do what I need to do. I don't think I ever really stop hustling. Um, it just is that's that's just kind of in me, you know what I'm saying. But for those, I will say this though, for those if you got kids and you think they want to do some type of job that requires them to go to college. Y'all, while them kids is in college, I'm not trying to be funny. Y'all gonna think I'm wrong for saying this. Don't let them come home for summer. Don't let them come home for summer. Let them come home for the holidays, but don't let them come home for summer. All these little breaks and stuff, they should not be at the crib. They should not be at the crib just chilling. They should not be at the crib chilling. They should be interning because it's competitive out here. These people ain't just looking at your transcript no more. And your grades. They're not just hiring you because you say you got a degree. They're going to hire the person who, oh, in they summers, they've been interning here. Or they interned there. Or they got experience here. Or they got this, that. Another thing, if your children are young, just go back to what I said in the previous video. Start exposing them to all types of different things. Find out what their passions is now while they're young. It's never too early to start, but it is too, it's some time when it's too late. Your kid, 15, 16, 17, 18, it's too late. It's too late for that. Start them young, exposing it to them. Let them shadow. Like, for instance, I wanted to be a veterinarian. I used to shadow a veterinarian. My mom was like, oh, you want to be an animal doctor, huh? Okay, let's see if you really want to do that. Go to a vet. Most of the time, these vets, they want to help young kids get into the profession. They will let you shadow. You know what I'm saying? Drop them off once a week or twice a week or whatever however you do they should kids should not be sitting at home looking at tv in the summertime not really what's on it because they not watching nothing but twerking videos we don't need no more twerking tutorials you know what i'm saying they should not be looking at instagram 24 7. your kids should be out here if they want to do art take them places and let them sit like for instance if they like to draw they like to paint you need to be taking them places where they sit and draw and paint those landscapes or people or objects or whatever it is. They should be working on honing their craft. They should be working to see, is this what I really want to do? If they want to be a doctor, let them shadow a doctor. If they want to be a nurse, let them shadow a nurse. If they want to be a lawyer, let them shadow a lawyer. You get what I'm saying? If they want to be a physical trainer, they need to, they need to be in these spaces and seeing, is this really what I want to do? And if it's not, you got time to adjust and make changes. Those are the things that, you know what I'm saying, you need to be pushing your kids to do. Kids should not be laying on their ass 24-7. That's another thing. Mama didn't allow that. On Saturday, all that sleeping, sleeping in. I got up on Saturday the same time I got up on during the week. No sleeping in. What you talking about sleeping in? I, didn't even, I wasn't even allowed to take naps like that. Like, what you napping for? You got something you could be doing. There's something in this house need cleaning. Something around here need work. Something that you need to be reading something. You need to be, you see what I'm saying? I hate to say it, if you press them now to where they not lazy, they won't become that. Most of the time I see problems with people that was allowed their kids, they really want to have nothing to do with their kids, so they just let their kids lay around. That's why your kid's lazy now. They have zero work ethic. That's why they choose to lay around instead of doing what they're supposed to be doing. There's things you can be doing. You should always be trying, you know what I'm saying? You can rest when you're dead. And I know, I know what y'all gonna say. Yeah, you should take some time. Yeah, and I take time to rest, I do. But I'll be resting like that. We ain't got time to be breaking like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I got stuff to do. But a lot of the time, the things I'm doing actually bring me joy. So I don't count that as work sometimes. Like, gardening, that brings me joy. So I'm working on my house. I like that. Um, you know, things like that. Um, there are certain things I consider work. Like, mowing the yard. That's work to me. I don't like that. But I do it because I have to do it. You know what I'm saying? But I was given a work ethic to where, and I, I usually tease myself. And this is how you have to train your kid. Tell yourself, Okay, I got to mow the yard. I don't want to do that. But after I mow the yard, I can do something that I want to do. So I'll, I'll trick myself. I'll be like, okay, mow the yard so you can be able to do this. And I truly hold myself to that. Like, I will not just do the, all the fun stuff and just leave all the other stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, that's poor parenting when your children 
You know what I'm saying? I know several people in my life that's like that. And I told them, I said, I know offense, your parents screwed you. Because and, and they realize it. They're like, Yeah, I gotta try to, you know, get get out of this. Yeah. And it's it's harder to do when you're an adult. When they say uh, it's hard to teach your old dog new tricks, they really mean that for humans. It's easy to teach an old dog new tricks. It's hard as hell to teach an old human new tricks. Old hard as hell. So, you know, all those little different things. Let me see, what else? What else? What else? Just talking on this work topic. Oh. Uh, start breeding entrepreneurship into your children too. Sometimes you go to college for things, but y'all need to be breeding and teaching entrepreneurial thought patterns. They need to not always be thinking like an employee. They need to be thinking like an employer. You see what I'm saying? Your kids should not be out here just always want to be beholden to somebody else. They should want their own. They should strive to have their own. They should strive to run the show. They should strive to be leaders, not only at work, but in their community. Things like this. That stuff starts when they're young. That stuff starts when they're young, y'all. So stay. I mean, I know it's a lot, but you had them kids. Not trying to be funny. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I ain't got no kids, but that's, that's why. Because I know it's a hard job. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. And I see people out here raising their kids, doing a good job, and then I see other people out here slacking. And I'm just like, but see, this this what this is our future. And people don't be understanding that. People do not understand. I'm, I'm gonna give y'all an analogy, I'm gonna let y'all go. When you have a child, it's very much like taking a rock and throwing it out into a pond or a lake, just a body of water. You know how you throw a rock in? And the ripples do like this here and go all the way out to the edge. The ripples never stop until they hit something. The edge of the water, the boat, whatever. That's what having a child is. Your child is that rock. And society is the water. When you throw that rock out into that water, your child will touch people's lives. Good or bad. For good or bad. Whatever it is. Good, bad, and different. They're going to touch people's lives. And that's going to ripple out amongst society. Because hurt people hurt people. So if your child is out here hurting five or six people, those five or six people go out and hurt five or six more people, and it magnifies. And the same way those ripples magnify as they go out across the water. It's the same. same thing with positivity. If you take your child and throw them out there and your child has a positive effect on somebody's life, and this counts for you too, have a positive effect, you have a positive effect, watch this, you have a positive effect on, let's say, one person. That one person go out and have a positive effect on one, well, let's say two, two people. Because the math wasn't going to be right on that one. Anyway, your child can have a positive effect on two people. And those two people, two more people. And those two people, two more people. You see how it's going to magnify? It's going to magnify. So you have to be careful. You know what I'm saying? Jeffrey Dahmer didn't go out and kill one person. Jerry Sandusky didn't go out and molest one boy. You see what I'm saying? These people had affected people's lives and it magnified. I don't know how many people Jeffrey Dahmer killed, but I know it's at least 10. Each one of those people had family. And their family wasn't one person. Same thing with Jerry Sandusky. He go rape these boys. They grow up and be men. And I'm not saying that they're out here hurting people. I pray to God that they have gotten the help that they need. You know, from experiencing that pain or that demon. Because he's a demon in my opinion. I wish they'd kill him in jail. Y'all get mad at me, I don't care. I, I believe in purging. I'm like Toussaint. Y'all study the Haitian Revolution. Toussaint killed all the all the turncoats, all the coons. He killed them all before the revolution. Because he said if we have one person, one person can throw a monkey wrench in the whole thing. We got to, if we even suspect, we got to kill him. I believe this society needs a purge. I really do. I may be one of the people to get prayers. I don't know. But these pedophiles and all these people, and that's why it bothers me. They go out and rape these people. These kids grow up and get grown. And the reason I'm saying this, I have met men that have been raped by some other man when they was a boy. And they never got any help. And they good people. They're not bad people, but they just, they hurt other people. So when you run into people that's always hurting other people, understand they probably had something going on in their life. They probably have never gotten help for it. And you can lead a horse to the water, and, and but they won't drink. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I said the people I know, they're not bad people. You try to encourage them to get help, they won't get help. And unfortunately, they just can't be in my life like that um, because I'm not going to allow you to bully me. 
you know, it is what it is. And if you see this video, okay. But um, love you, but can't do you. But anyway, anyway, <laughs> they know I'm crazy. Trust me. Um, but that that's real. That's some real stuff. And when you really sit down and have a grown ass conversation, you really find out what's going on in society. And that's why I said, be careful what you are unleashing on the world through your loins. If you can't. If you can't really try, and I'm not saying that your kids gonna do everything you want them. That's all I'm saying. What I'm saying is try your best because the people out here doing this stuff, and I'm gonna say, this, what's the man that killed the man they found? All them police officers that killed George Floyd, but that main one, Derek Chauvin. You see his mama. My son's a good boy. She's the main one. That woman created that monster. She's the main one. I bet you Jerry Sanders does get mama say the same shit. I bet you Jeffrey Dahmer's mama say the same shit. I bet you Timothy McBay mama say the same shit. They good boys. No, they not. You unleashed hell's gates from your loins. And you think that's cool. It's not. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to get off of that. That's my little rant. Like I said, y'all just be careful. And, and be kind of so, oop, they go to law. They're getting somebody. Throw them lights on them. Throw them lights on But, um... Y'all, go out here and just get after it. Do something positive. Um, if, if anybody Creole seller, I ain't busting people in the head. I got I got seeds. Um, but yeah, y'all go out here and do something with the day. Make it a good day. Be positive. Try to affect somebody's life in a positive way. Until next time, I'll see you guys later.